In this video, we'll derive the relationships between U and H, the internal energy and enthalpy functions. So, ngayon, we'll start muna tayo dun sa na-derive natin dun sa Joule-Thomson experiment. H is equal to U plus PV. This is the definition of your enthalpy. Kunin natin yung derivative. DH is equal to DU plus DPV. Usually, kinukuha lang natin yung total derivative niya, PDV plus VDP. Pero this time, kukunin natin yung dependencies nila with respect to the temperature and the number of moles. So, para magawa natin yun, we have to use the ideal gas model. So, PV is equal to NRT. That's the ideal gas equation. The derivative of PV here can be derived from the NRT. So, that's for the ideal gas equation. So, N and P na yung magiging variables yun dito. So, the total derivative of this term is RT dN plus NR dT plus NT dR. Since R is constant, this is 0. Okay? So, substituting dH is equal to du plus, this is um, yung inyong um, dPV kanina. Okay? Nag-substitute na tayo. Kinuuna natin to, Nilagay na natin doon. Okay? So, dH is equal to du plus RT dN plus NR dT. Okay? So, marami tayong um, pwedeng maderive na relationships from this, okay? Pero i-emphasize ko yung dalawa. The dependence in the number of moles of gas particles present and the dependence in the temperature. So, for the temperature dependence, okay, for systems without chemical reaction, so, isa lang yung kailangan natin magamit nito. Hindi natin usually ma- i-exhibit ng sabay yung dependencies. Okay? Mas mahirap siyang i-demonstrate. Okay? So, ang gagawin ko lang, isa-isa lang. So, ito ay for temperature dependence. This is for the Dependence in the number of moles of gas particles or nakadepende siya sa stoichiometry ng reaction. Okay? So, dito muna tayo sa temperature dependence. dH is equal to du plus nr dt. So, getting the temperature dependence at constant pressure, we get dH over dt at constant P is equal to du over dt at constant P plus nr. Okay? So, wala tayong uh, original definition ng du dt at constant P or the derivative of U with respect to temperature at constant pressure since yung ating internal energy function ay functions ng volume at temperature. Okay? So, hindi natin pa ito na define So, we will have to consult the total derivative of U, this one. So, du is equal to du dt at constant V times dt plus du dv at constant T dv. So, this one is zero for ideal gases. This is the joule free expansion or the Gay-Lussac Joule free expansion coefficient. So, zero siya sa ideal gas na, na establish natin siya dun sa huli nating video lecture. Okay? So, therefore, du, dt at constant p, we get that by dividing both sides by dt at constant p. So, makukuha natin to. It's equal to du, dt at constant v times dt over dt at constant p. So, this one is equal to 1 kasi pareho lang yung dt. Okay? So, therefore, du dt or the derivative of u with respect to temperature at constant pressure is equal to the derivative of u with respect to temperature at constant volume. So, at constant pressure and at constant volume, pareho lang yung dependencies ng delta u if the gas is ideal. Okay? So, therefore, okay, the dh over dt with respect to pressure or the cp is equal to du over dt at constant v or the cv plus nr. So, CP is equal to CV plus N. So, this is the relationship between the heat capacities of your ideal gas. Depende sa inyong process. So, nakapag-derive tayo ng gantong relationship. So, madali na makuha yung mga CP and CV ng ideal gases kapag alam natin yung isa sa kanila. Okay? So, gumawa na ako ng table ng so CV and CP of ideal gases that can be derived from statistical mechanics. Ang madederive nyo dito ay yung mga CV. Yung CP, ay makukuha nyo na lang dito sa equation na ito. Okay? For monoatomic gases, like uh, the noble gases, helium, krypton, neon, xenon, okay? ito yung kanilang CV. So, hanggalin natin yung bar. Okay? Kasi hindi sila intensive properties. They are in joules per Kelvin. Okay? So, monoatomic, that's 3 halves times NR. So, 3 halves plus 1, that's 5 halves NR kapag CP naman na monoatomic ideal gas. Linear polyatomic gases, yung mga diatomic gases natin like oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. Since dalawa lang yung atoms, of course, linear yung kanilang bond. So, that's 5 halves NR for the CV and 7 halves NR for the CP. That's 5 halves plus 1. Okay? So, linear non-linear polyatomic, ito na yung mga ammonia na vapor, mga water vapor, and chloroform, etc. Basta non-linear and marami silang atoms sa molecule. The CV of those gases is 3NR and the CP is 4NR for ideal gas behavior. Okay? So, that's the CV and CP of various types of ideal gas. So, punta naman tayo dito sa uh, constant temperature condition. So, ang nagbabago naman dito ay yung number of species present or gas present dun sa system. 
So, if we cancel this, kasi constant temperature, okay, we have dH is equal to du plus RT dN. Okay, so, therefore, delta H is equal to delta U plus delta NG RT. So, delta NG is the change in the amount of gas particles in the reaction. So, the delta NG is denoted by the equation, the summation of the number of gases in the products minus the uh, summation of the number of gases in the reactants. So, for example, yung, born, or yung Heber Bosch cycle H2 plus N2 okay, and H3. So, kapag binalans natin to, pwede natin lagyan 2, this is 3. Okay, so the delta NG according to the balanced equation, is equal to the number of gas particles dito sa product. If this is a gas, okay, gas yan. So, this is 2, okay, tapos minus, this is gas, this is gas, so 3 plus 1, 4, that is negative 2. Okay, that is the delta NG of your uh, reaction above. Siyempre, pwedeng magbago yung stoichiometry niyan. Halimbawa, dinivide ko both sides by 2, magiging 3 halves um, H2 plus 1 half N2 okay, magiging NH3 okay, gas na rin to gas and gas so pag tinignan nyo dito ang 1 mole dito ay yung N2 so that's de delta NG is negative 2 per mole ng N2 pero dito 1 mole na dito yung NH3 so the delta NG is equal to 1 minus okay 1 half plus 3 halves okay so 1 half plus 3 halves is 4 halves or 2 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Okay? So, the delta NG, kapag 1 mole naman yung ammonia, that is negative 1. Okay? So, depende yan sa pagkakabalance nyo ng inyong reaction. So, more examples ito later. Okay? So, then, sample problem muna tayo. After supplying 2.3 kilojoules of heat at constant pressure and at 80 degrees Celsius, 1.1 grams of water evaporated. Assume that the vapor is ideal. So, letter A, let's calculate the enthalpy of the process. Actually, itong 2.3 kJ of heat at constant pressure, this is heat at constant pressure. So, ito na yung enthalpy nyo. Ang problema lang nito ay 2.3 kJ per 1.1 grams H2O. Ang kailangan nating unit ay kJ per mole. So, i-convert lang natin 1.1 grams H2O into number of moles. So, kJ per mole, okay? So, makakancel na to. Okay? Ang makukuha nyo ay 37.670 kJ per mole ng water. So, that's how you get the enthalpy in the units of kilojoules per mole. Magpapalit lang actually siya ng unit. Okay? So, calculate the work done through evaporation. Siyempre, the process has produced gases kasi nagkaroon ka ng evaporation. So, may work done yun, equivalent. So, how do we get the work done? So, we know that work is negative P, delta V, at constant pressure. Using the ideal gas equation, we have PV is equal to NRT. Wala tayong um, information sa pressure and sa volume niya. So, we have to use the ideal gas equation para makuha naman yung temperature and uh, number of moles dependence ng ating system. So, dPV is equal to dNRT. Makuha natin yung PDV plus VDP, the total derivative of this. And the total derivative of this is RT dN plus NRDT. At constant temperature and pressure, syempre constant pressure to, constant temperature to, okay? So, zero sila. So, PDV is equal to RT dN. P delta V is equal to RT del delta N. So, therefore, work is negative P delta V it's equal to negative delta NG RT. So, alam na naman natin yung equation na delta NG, okay? Number of gas particles sa products minus number of gas particles sa reactants. So, ano ba yung reaction natin? Water na liquid na naging water na gas. So, obviously, wala tayong uh, gas particles sa reactant. So, kung ilang moles to, yun na yung delta NG. So, kung 1.10 moles yung, or 1.10 grams yung H2O sa product, that's 1.1 grams divided by 18.016, that's 0 0.06106 moles gas. So, minus 0 kasi 0 moles of gas particles ang ating reactant. Okay? Therefore, the work done is negative, number of moles of gas, 0 0.06106 times R, which is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, times 80 plus 273.15 Kelvin, so that's negative NGRT. Work is negative 179.268 joules. So, this is the amount of energy used or the amount of work done kapag ka 0 0.0616 moles yung gas. Gano karami yung work done kapag 1 mole yung gas? So, all you need to do is to divide negative 179.268 sa 0 0.06106. Ang makukuha nyo ay negative 2935.937 joules per mole water. This energy is equivalent to 1.10 grams lang ng water. This is equal to 18.016 or 1 mole ng water. Okay? So, that's how you predict the number of uh, energy or the work done depends on amount ng gas. 
Okay? So finally, we calculate the internal energy of the of the process. Okay? So delta H is equal to delta U plus delta NGRT. Meron tayong value nito. Delta U is therefore delta H minus delta NGRT. The delta H is 37.670. The work is 2.936 kilojoules per mole. You just have to divide this by 1,000 para maging kilojoules. So therefore, delta U is 40.606 kilojoules per mole water. Okay? So, that's how you uh, work out the calculations kapag ka sa simple evaporation processes or sa simple processes involving ideal gas. Okay? So, next problem. After supplying 1.5 kilojoules of heat, the volume of 0.5 moles of helium increased from 11.25 to 12.5 liters as it expands against a constant pressure of 2.75 atmosphere. Helium is an ideal gas. Calculate the initial and final temperature of the gas in Kelvin. Okay? So, ang ginawa ko lang dito sa letter A, kinuha ko lang yung temperature using the ideal gas equation. Kasi mag-given na tayong pressure, volume, and number of moles. So, PV is equal to NRT. Makukuha mo yung mga temperatures na initial and final. So, it expands at constant pressure. So, 2.75 to 2.75. Pareho pa rin ang pressure. Volume is uh, increased from 11.25 to 12.5. Wala namang nadagdag o nabawas na number of moles. So, it's the same. Ang nabago lang ay temperature and pressure. You can also use the... Uh, uh, Gay-Lussac's law kung na-solve nyo na yung initial. Okay? So, letter B, calculate the delta U of the process. So, delta U is equal to Q plus W. Q is given 1.5 kilojoules, positive, kasi it was supplied. Okay? So, positive 1.5 kilojoules. So, W is negative 2.75 atm. This is negative P, external dV. So, dV is 12.5. That's the final minus initial, 11.25 liters. Makuha nyo yung negative 3.4375 liter atmosphere. This is a weird unit. So, ang gagawin nyo, mumultiply nyo siya ng 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin over 0.082056 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. This is the R in terms of joules. This is the R in terms of liter atmosphere. So, makakancel yung liter atmosphere. Makakancel yung mole Kelvin. So, ang matitira ay joules. Siyempre, kailangan natin ay kilojoules. So, you have to multiply by 1 kilojoule over 1,000 joules. Makakancel naman yung joules. Okay? You have the kilojoules na unit. So, therefore, the work done is negative 0.3483 kilojoules. So, determining the delta U, we have 1.5 kilojoules minus 0.3483 kilojoules. We have 1.1517 kilojoules. Okay? So, this is the example or one of the examples on how you calculate parameters in the first law of thermodynamics. So, marami pang mga susunod na calculations and examples sa mga susunod na video. So, see you next video.